Hello and welcome to UKGK TV. My name's Dave Nicholson and I'm here today with a good friend of mine, Pete. Uh, there's a reason for that very shortly. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you all for the positive comments for the last video. No Bill today, I'm afraid. He's away uh, enjoying himself, but I've got someone to step in for him today, which is Pete. The reason we've got Pete in today, because today's episode is about the Hellraiser films and the model kits connected to it. And no, who's any better to do it than Pete? Over to you, Pete. How long right. have you been doing it, Pete? Um, from the time that I did the very first one, um, around about 30 years, I think. What? Although I did the first ones, um, the first four screaming kits, um, and then didn't do anything for the next 15, 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then got back into the... The, the hobby to one. doing that, doing these um, about four years ago. So you so so you originally started with the screaming. Yeah, I I, I was a big Hellraiser fan. I'd never made a kit in my life, um, mm -hmm. and I was walking down the road in Manchester once, and at the end of Deansgate there was a, a shop that did models. Manchester models. Yeah, that's the one. And they had a pinhead in the window, and which, which was the, was it the quarter skies or the small one? It was the. Six scale, probably one six scale, yeah. screaming yeah. vinyl. Yeah, um, and the original one was him with his hands out holding the box. Yeah, and I bought that, and then I was kind of there as they were releasing them, and then they did all of the four main Cenobites, and then the Doctor, then they mm. did a couple more Pinheads. Yeah, and then that was it. I, um, I'd, I'd done them, and didn't get involved with the. No hobby at all then. So you so you weren't really an hobbyist. You were more of a Hellraiser fan. I was fan. way more a Hellraiser fan. Tell us than a bit about the films, because to be honest with you, Pete, they had a film that when I was growing up, that was one of the films that kind of scared me. I, I've watched the Exorcist, I've watched the slasher movies, but that somehow disturbed me. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the films and why that was a, got an affinity with yourself, mate. So it, the 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 main problem I'll say about Hellraiser <laughs> is that it's called Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. It was the original book that it was taken from. It was called The Hellbound Heart. Mm -hmm. um, when they adapted it into a film, the Cenobites tell you what they are. They're um, explorers. They're not monsters. Demons. They will only give you what you ask for. The problem is they give it you to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. So if you want pleasure, they'll give you so much pleasure that it overloads you. If you like pain, they'll give you so much pain it overloads you. They're not inherently evil. They don't care. It's almost like their job. Yeah. Later on the franchise, they turned them into monsters and they were right. demons. Okay. Okay. But originally they weren't. They, they were Angels to some, demons to others. <laughs> As, and what got you into that? Did you did you just see the film? And I thought, saw the great. film and just it blew me away. It's I love the idea of it, and mm. it was sinister. And it, there's a little bit of blood in it, but it wasn't very. It wasn't like a slasher movie. No, it was. It was oh, calm yeah. and collected, and I think that's what scared me. Thoughtful. I think, I think, yeah. I, think I watched the first one, and I was kind of ooh, it unnerved me, and then I never went back to it. So basically, I kind of didn't really get into it because it did have a bit of an effect on me and I didn't yeah, quite like it. It's like the it. Hannibal Lecter behind the glass thing where he's cold and calm. Yes. And you know that yes. it, it, yeah. it, at any moment it could go all together wrong for yeah. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because because and how, and how old are the Hellraisers now? The first one, when was the first one? I think there were first ones were in the 80s. So they were eight, early, these early are 80s, 80s films. Have yeah. you met Doug? Have you met Doug Bradley, the I've guy? Met, I've met all of the, the, the original four. Um... Yeah, I got one of my kits that signed I got from Doug. you. Signed oh, great Doug. stuff. He's a nice guy, isn't he? He's a lovely guy. Apart from being a Liverpool fan. Apart from being a Liverpool <laughs> fan. A truly horrific point of Elvis. That's the scary bit about the old film, isn't it? He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a red, isn't he? Pinhead being red. a United fan. See, we've got a, bit of a, we've got a bit of rival here. He's a Man United fan. I'm a Leeds fan. I think we both don't like Liverpool. Joking. It's, it's football. But there you go. Yeah. So you met him at... Holocon last year. I met him at cool Holocon guy. and um, Barbie Wilde. Oh, Simon and Vince, all, all four. Yeah, and they were all lovely. They really were nice. Now your collection. I've seen your collection. It's got to be yeah. one of an amazing collection, I've mate. I've got... Um, I, don't, I don't ask you how much you've spent. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't tell you how much I've spent, but um, I guess I've got around about 50 different 
models. Resin models. Um, resin and vinyl. The, the, I've got some big 1-1 one, one scale mm. head and shoulders. There's about five or six of those. What's your favourite? And they're all horror, hollow. Um, Spin cast like, small cast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at the big ones, you've got the... You, you, did you get the Howard Senf one? That was quite a nice one where it's just his... His shoulders, that's quite a decent size. Yeah, I've got the, the, the set that I got from a, a, a guy in the States, I bought them all in one go, so this huge box survived. And, yeah, there was Pinhead, the original surgeon. Yeah. Butterball, Angelique, Chatterer, Spike and Pinhead. So you bought all of them? I think them. that's all of them. Yeah, they didn't do a female. Which is the one. They did, they did the, the, the four main... Uh, characters from the first two films, but didn't do the. You didn't uh, carry on. Didn't do the the female. Okay, so you, I, I know you've got a lot of the resin stuff, and like I know Keith, Keithy Boy Productions did a line of them, didn't he? Well, that's that's how I got, I got back into it. So I, I wasn't looking for anything to do with uh, models and model kits. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a Hellraiser forum, mm -hmm. and. Um, Somebody, it turns out Keithy Boy, um, yeah. <laughs> posted a kit. And I got in touch with Keith and got chatting to him. And he's a lovely fella. Yeah. And um, Fanatical I, about I, it, though, isn't he? Well, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 st I started buying the, the, uh, the whole range that he did. And he'd done, I don't know how many is that? The eight or nine, I think. Yeah, um, you got them all. That he'd done, yeah. And I, I started buying them. And Keith then uh, recommended coming over to see you. Okay. And the rest and I, of, I came over here and then the rest is history. history with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then did you have the one off Paul as well, the small thing, the very small with the pillars of the story that we yeah, told Yeah, I, I, I bought that. Chatting him up in an alleyway. I bought that, like yeah. That. <laughs> Once I'd got into it and then I, I was approaching it more from a model kit rather than the Hellraiser side. Mm -hmm. um, although I was looking for Hellraiser kits, but models of them. Um, then I got in touch with... Paul, and uh, he did a full set. So I, 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 got, I know what's coming. I got the set, and then yeah, I went and picked them up in a lay-by, which was all fine and good. And then my phone sent him a message saying, "Tell me more about yourself." And I couldn't be. And I was, I got in touch and said, "Dave, Dave, look what my phone's done." And and he said, "Oh, don't worry, Paul's a." Paul's a cool guy. And he'll, he'll take it. <laughs> and then I just had to keep apologising to him. <laughs> yeah. He is a nice bloke, though. He is. He's a He's very, 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 very... I've, I've since bought... I love um, oh, the, stuff's the stuff that Paul does. It's I've, great. At the minute, doing his insects, his, his kind of his Chinese, warriors. Japanese yeah, warriors. Great, yeah, they? they're... Um, it's a nice guy, very Good. underrated sculptor. Very. Um, but, the, but the most important part about Paul, he's a really nice chap. And, and the, the, the Hellraiser kit that he did, uh, not to knock anyone else, but lots of people just do pinhead, head and shoulders um, stuff. And the, the, there's some brilliant ones out there. But what Paul did was look at the original story in the comics. Oh, and I he's see. got characters in there that you will never get in anything else. There's yeah. a clown that juggles its eyes. It's only in for a very brief moment, but Paul sculpted it. Um, yeah. And then there's a comic book stories where the heroine from the first films actually turns into Pinhead, yeah. and he's got a sculpt of her doing that. Oh, right. um, and you just won't find them anywhere else. Because we, because as modelers, they tend to concentrate on the film yeah. uh, side of it, don't they? Yeah. yeah. And, so, and and always Pinhead's such an iconic thing. It, it's the, yeah. I have a lot of of pinhead pinheads. So, what do you think of the new film? Has it done it justice? Have it reinvented um, it? Or what? I, I really like the new film. I think they made a slight mistake again. Me being the a purist, bringing the down on it yeah. is that it, it was kind of sold that it was a remake, and it it absolutely isn't. The story is nothing like the first. That the character of Pinhead appears, but. Spoiler alert, it's a woman. Yeah. And there's no black leather. Yeah. All the costume is done in flesh. And the cohorts are all uh, different than the original films. So what um, is it? Is it, is, it a, is it a different story? Or it's, is a, it a, it's a totally different story. Oh, right. So, totally, so totally different it, story. it could stand on its own. It Totally. You could watch that and you don't need to have ever seen any of the other 10, 11 
Hellraiser films. Oh, is that how many they've made? They've made, yeah. And that some of the middle ones are atrocious. <laughs> they, they just made them to keep the rights. Is that what So they took any film and basically filmed it and then stuck Pinhead appearing right at the end so they and could called keep... it a Hellraiser film and they kept the rights then. So they could keep the franchise going. That, that's, that was it and they're diabolical, some of them. So where does it rate for you then, Pinhead? I mean, a lot of people that do the model kits, we're going to have a look at some in a second. He's kindly fetched us some. Up there with the Universals, do you think? Is it a modern classic? Do you think it's got its own sort of level? Um, I... It, it, it's what you like. I, I I love the Hellraiser. I love the all of the the, the concept, the characters. It. I might not like the films or the stories, but the characters and the the ideas I love. I don't particularly like Dracula and Frankenstein, which seems to be a a big a kind of a yeah a, a big a big curse. I and um, I, I get why people like them, but they're not my thing. Mm. I, I, I like the Hellraiser. I also like Predator and Alien. Um, that's for another video, the Predator. You've got into Predator I've now, got haven't you? A few Predator kits, yeah. Uh, he um, started off as Elvazer, and then he got the bug, and then he's then gone over to the, uh, the, the the Predators now. So every time he comes to see me, he's bought a new Predator, and then he'll buy other bits and pieces. But he's got a bit of a healthy hobby, uh, haven't you? You've got quite a yeah, bit of stuff now. I've you got, must be running out of space, though. I've had to put a load in boxes and put them in the loft because I've just got nowhere to put them. I really enjoy doing them. and then Is it the painting or the displaying that you like? I, it's the painting. I, the it's the painting. Apart from... The, I, there's a video of the, the front room of my house which is just Hellraiser. Right. And there is walls and walls full of them. I've seen it. But it's a room that... I nope. never go with. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't use you might, it. You might not come out of it. I don't. Good. I don't use it. Um, all my friends talk about it, the dungeon. But um, yeah, I don't. I've, I've got them all around my living room. I've put a load in boxes and put them up in the loft because I've just not got the room. So it's a definite. It's a definite. So I love. I love painting them. But once they're finished and and stood away, then it's done. Move on to the next one. That's what it is. Right, he's going to show us some bits he's got today. What have you fetched for us today then, well, Pete? I, I brought a couple, of um, certainly one of my favourites. Um, th this is a, a, a modern one, and this is one that Keithy Boy oh, produced. This is a nice um, one, isn't it? Although... Wow, how good that one out. The likeness is fantastic. That's, that's that Elliot. Was, that was, that's, that's him before he turns into that's, Pinhead? That's the guy that stood Bradley without the Pinhead. Outfit on. So basically, it does. What does he do? Find this box and open this box up, and then the, he the original uh, in the film. Um, Elliot Spencer's a soldier who's disillusioned with the war. He's seeking it like a way out, and he opens the box, and his depravity and uh, it's kind of in line with. I'm going to call it hell. It's not really hell, and he becomes Pinhead. Right. Um, but he forgets all about who he is until somebody sort of, there's a redemption. Okay. Um, and he's torn away from Pinhead, which quite fittingly... Is this one? <laughs> ...fits into this one. Um, oh, that's which right. is... Uh, I've seen that one before. That's um, in the third that's in, film. That's in where he's coming out into... That's in the third film... Uh, Elliot's actually trying to get back into Pinhead because once they remove Elliot from the monster, yeah. the monster's unchained then. He's got no rules. He doesn't have to follow anything. He can just be as horrific as he wants. So Elliot fights to get back into Pinhead yeah. and then gets sent back to hell right. because they can't do it. Pinhead won't go on his own. Right, so the first one now, can you show, show us that one again? The first one, the Elliot Spencer. This one is sculpted by Andy Copeland. Um, sadly, it's no longer available, uh, but this was produced by Keithy Boy. Um, lovely piece, fantastic likeness. Andy did a good job. A casting, good casting. Yeah, it's stunning. Um, as with all of Keith's kits, you don't have to clean them. No. They're, they're, they're absolutely... Second to none. You just... Undercoat it's, and paint it's, it. it's a painter's kit, isn't it? It is. It is. Do it's, we know? Do we know who's done this one? We don't know. Tell us the story where you got this one. From. No idea. That that uh, somebody on was selling it on eBay, and it was uh, quite badly painted. So it spent its first few days of its life in a 
a bag with some oven cleaner stripping all the paint off it. Really nice that is. Really, really nice. Really, really, really nice. Superb. But we don't know where this one's come from, guys. It's quite a heavy thing. I, I don't know what resin it is, but it's quite a heavy resin. Is it one part? Was it one part? Yeah, it's just one one piece. Brilliant. Absolutely. Brilliant. What's the next one then, Pete? And then, after the third film, that seemed to be, they did a set, and these are the ones that I'm desperately trying to find. Um, they're the pseudo Cenobites from the third film, and, and this one is uh, Camera Head. Wow, he's nice, isn't he? Um, Where did you get him from? <laughs> a, a, a woman was selling a load of toys off in the States, and I spied it. It was, it was, doesn't understand that stands, uh, uh, one that Keith produces, yeah. uh, um, and it was just lay there, and I, I, I and realised what it was and I said to her do you want to sell the guy and she was quite happy to sell me that and uh, yeah uh, and it wound its way over from the States I paid very little for it she had no idea what it was and I, I don't actually know what the worth no um, but I knew that it was did you have getting you quite hard to, to, to find get hold of now is it was it a cold cast material was it like a brittle material or uh, yes it, yeah it, i think it might be part of the other ones that you're going to show us yeah there's they did a set there was the camera head there was cd head there was barbie jp the dreamer um that that are all in the third film are they and, all from the same company I don't know. I've I've got that one, and I've got the Let's, CD. I've shall got... we have a look at these? Unboxing here. This is this, he's not even built and painted this one. That's that's the six. So I don't oh know. right. So here's your certificate, guys. This is a. Oh, it's a Chris Forward. Yeah, Chris is a cool guy. Coldcast, CNG Coldcast. This is an old one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris Forward. This one is. So this one is the CD. Cenobite, CD Cenobite. All oh, right, wow. Uh -oh. Wow, it's nicely, oh, it just feels, yeah. Now, on the last video, guys, we were talking about different materials that kits come in. This is definitely the cold cast material stuff. Um, you can you can feel it, it's almost got like a, a clammy feel, isn't it? It feels like clammy. Porcelain, I always think. Yeah, it's it like feels kind of dusty. More like pottery than it does. Yes, it feels like pottery. It's got like a clammy sort of feel about it. It's really nice, really nice, mate. Nicely cast. And that's really nicely cast. The head. There's the head. Unfortunately, one of the CDs is broken. There we go, guys. So. Very, very nicely done there indeed. That's a beautiful piece. And you say this one's quite difficult to get hold of, Pete. Yeah, well, they're very old, and I think that most people that have ever had them have built them and painted them. That one's a, that one's a one six scale piece. I'm guessing he's got a CD in his head and comes on a, a CD in his hand comes on a nice, um, like a street base with a with a grid on it. So I'm guessing he's kind of he's kind of walking there. So it's quite a nice piece that. Yes, nice piece. Nice. There's no work on that whatsoever. There's no clean up on it. Very, very delicately done. I'm just a bit worried about damaging that for you, Pete. But, yeah. yeah so, that, there's your CD guy. So, the next one we've got here. Oh, here we go. Is it is. Just a, right. So, this one is a J, This is a JP Memo. I remember uh, this one. Keith was after one of these. I, I got him one just recently from a customer. Um, uh, I'm, this is a Neil Sims piece. Uh, so, Neil, I think Neil put this out. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was NNT or he did it out of his own company when he, when he can. Yeah, Neil Sims Productions. So this is a proper Neil Sims. This is a while ago. This one, mate. This, again, this is a. Um, this is an old kit, mate. Yeah, it's a very, the, very the, old the kit. The from the one film, um, and it, it was the third film that they made. I don't, I don't know what year they made it. So this, so. the CD guy, that one is from Coldcast, and I think that one's from the Wales. Uh, and by Chris Forward, and then the one we're looking at now, the Monroe one, is by Neil Sims, and again that feels cold cast. So that obviously, as in last per video, and you go a quick look at him. He looks a nice chap to meet out. I don't he really. Uh, slight, slight more, slight little, slight seam there, but it's not much on it, guys. Really nice piece that. Um, Neil, Neil's a Neil's a good sculptor. Detailing on that one's fantastic. There is all the bits that the pistons that are in are done in brass, 
The, the, the rods that stick to his head are done in brass. It's a really, brass, really so. nice, really, real nice one, that. And a, 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 a Neil's got some fantastic detail in that one. So there's the two together. Um, roughly about the same scale. So it, it would make a nice sort of, a nice set, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. So that's, that's really nice, that one, Pete. First time I've seen one of them for a long time. Neil, obviously, Neil's, Neil's detailing is fantastic. If you look down here... Are you going to paint this one or take it? Or are you going to keep I, I, it? I, I, the, but yeah, they will get painted. I will hold off for a while, but I know that eventually I will just give in and paint them. You will. You're not. So you're not. Buy, you don't buy these for collectibles. You just buy no. them for. No, I just you buy them for, for your the own enjoyment. So what's going to happen to all these old laser things when anything happens to you? Is the family going to have it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it? There'll be a big sale on eBay, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is the. I, is this one? Take it. This one's not in production still anymore, is it? I don't. I don't think any of these are. I don't think you can. I, I would stand to be corrected. I don't think you can get hold of any of them. No, anymore. I don't That's think why so. Why they become so rare? I think Neil went on to do tattooing. I think. It, I don't think Neil's doing much sculpting at the moment. It's a real shame because he's a fantastic sculptor. Neil is. A nice set of instructions, by the way, which you don't see very often. Um, with the JP, so this is these are fantastic. I mean, I know Keith goes on about this set. I know Keith goes on about this set, and I think I'm not sure if he's got them all. I'm pretty sure he has. Going over to the state side now, did you get that great big Chenard one where he's got the huge big thing where he's where he's where he's supported by the Doctor Chenard? Is it? I, I got yeah. There was I've got two screaming did one yeah which which I have, and then there's a resin one. Wasn't there's it? a resin one. With all and the with it, all the tentacles and stuff. I think it's the same guy that did a Julia one where Skinless she stood Julia. on a mattress. Yeah. And she's got a, a skinned and she's yeah. got a hand out. Yeah. I think they're either from the same sculptor or the same studio. I wouldn't swear to it. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think you probably. Well, I remember when I used to go over to Chiller Theatre, That that piece was was available and it was seeing its seeing its debut over there and then he had a. A Marilyn Manson Antichrist figure as exactly, well. Exactly, yes. Have you got that one? No, I haven't, and I am a big Marilyn Manson fan. Oh, right. uh, I saw somebody um, on one of the forums had it and was starting to paint it. Right. But I, I, I think, That's again... a big th thing, that, mate. That th th they're very hard to get older. They're very hard to get, and I think they were of the day. When we when, when I was used to go to Chile, they were, they were amazing, big, detailed pieces. Looking at these... They, they were fantastic pieces, but the casting was of its day. Mm. So, but I do believe that they've remastered some of them and are putting them out better now. But I'm not sure whether the two that you're looking whether, for, whether I can well, get hold well, of them. Well, the... fingers crossed. If anybody's got one, mm. just shoot a line to Pete, and I'm sure he'll be happy to uh, talk to you about that. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to ask you a really difficult question now. Favorite one. Favorite one. What um, have you enjoyed doing the most? Um, I, th Painting. I think the, the the for lots of different reasons the one one scale the, the sort of life scale ones yeah. um, were really challenging because painting small details is quite difficult. Well, a certain painting age now, big out. details <laughs> and making them look fairly real mm. uh, is 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 more difficult than I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought it'd be a lot easier because it was bigger, but it's a lot easier to make them look quite fake. Right. Um, um, favorite one. Pick a favorite one. Do you think? I, I, I just probably Elliot. The Elliot. Um, for because well, it's, it's looks, different. It's so different than all the pinheads. Um, although the last one that I got autographed. Yeah. Um. Uh, I thought that one. Yeah. Um. It is looks amazing. So when you've done it, when you've done it all up, it looks it looks, good. It looks amazing. So yeah. to be fun, to be fair, Andy's likenesses are fantastic, aren't yeah. they? I mean, you know who it is from just looking at it straight away. I do anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's and it's a nice take on it. Isn't I it? think I can, it's quite easy to make monsters because you could be slightly out and it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But if you're doing somebody's face, you've got to be bang. You've got to be right because if it isn't, they just look. You've got to be, you've, you've got to be bang on with it, and Andy does, and I know Andy's a big always a fan, so he's he's obviously really really gone to town on it. Mm -hmm. But that's it. So, all right, guys, thank you for that. I, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll try and get Pete back in because his other passion is Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade Runner. <laughs> he likes Blade Runner, uh, so he's a big. He's got a lot of Blade Runner stuff. Uh, so I think what we'll try and do is if he if he's okay with him and you've enjoyed this, we'll get him back in. 
Thank you for, for all the likes, all the kind words. We will try and put subtitles on for you, American cousin. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, well, I remember. Did you get Giovanni's uh, big piece, the one that hangs on the wall? Yeah, I did. What's it called? Jesus Christ. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Yeah. How good is that? Yeah, yeah. Did you buy it direct off, off Giovanni? Did you get it direct off I him? I think I did, yes. What's he like? Super guy, isn't um, he? Yeah, yeah. Real, really easy to He's to, really to nice. He's a, deal with. Giovanni's a really, really nice gentleman. He's always a plaque. He's, it's nice to see people doing something different, and it's a really lovely piece, that, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's, it's big, isn't it? How big is it? It is. Um, oh, it's a fair size. It's about yeah, wide. Mm. Uh, there's two boxes, and then there's the face that's being pulled apart with it's, chains. Again, it's a... It's a chance over in the states doing something like that, but credit to credit, credit to you, the blokes, the blokes took a chance, mm. and people like you really, really enjoy that sort of thing. So big kudos to Giovanni for that. Keep keep up the good work, guys. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. It's lovely to have Pete here. We'll try and get him back in on his. Uh... Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of UKGK. Uh, I'm pleased that I've got my, my dear friend here, Owen, from Stomping Free Studios. Studios. That's right. Owen's here today to give us a, you, you guys a few tips and tricks about painting. Obviously, you all guys have been doing it for years and years, but you're never too old to learn, guys. Uh, I always listen to what other people other people do things, and you can always pick something up. Now, Owen does a lot of um, the very, very small stuff, so his eyes are a lot better than mine. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not that good. Trust me, he's got new glasses. So how long have you been doing it, Owen? Uh, I've been painting miniatures since about 1977. And so what, what sort of stuff do you do to explain to the viewers? I, I paint everything from uh, Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Burrows and Badgers, whatever commission work anyone wants. They send it to me, and we paint them up to what standard they want, from Brilliant. tabletop to. What's t what does, what's tabletop? You keep Ta using yeah, tabletop. This is it's one of those things. If you're playing a war game, war war game, or a skirmish game, yeah, from six feet away, you can identify what it is right, by the okay. paint job, and the closer you get, the more detail you you add to the miniature. So right, six okay. foot. It's a base set of colours, but you know it's and a German soldier or a demon or whatever. And that, it is. that's tabletop. That's standard. tabletop. Standard. So what's the top level? If that's tabletop, top level we call comp. So like competition, so you literally pick the miniature up and you can see every detail, all the blend work, no yeah. brush strokes, everything, the yeah. eyeballs are spot on, that yeah. kind of work. So you've got tabletop and then up to comp, yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, going forward, so so what Owen's done is he's just recently entered his... Um, it, was one of, it was one of your Cheshire Cats, funny enough, yeah. uh, into the South Cheshire IPMS competition. Brilliant, how'd you get on? Uh, I won best in show. Fantastic. Yeah, really enough. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. Yes. A little chip, out, a little chip <laughs> yeah. there for him. <laughs> yeah. Right, so going forward, let's let's let, let's do a bit of myth busting here. Right, okay. Right, because you're you're a, what I call a professional painter. No, I mean I, you are. No, you come are, on, you are. You are. <laughs> For, you, we're not worthy. So basically, what do you find the common problems with newbies and people are, are commonly do? What, what advice would you right, give? Right, okay. The the first thing most people do is they'll they'll take a kit, a miniature, or even one of your yeah. resin kits. They don't wash them down, mm -hmm. which is a a must because any mold release, even if it's talcum powder or from yeah. injection molding, yeah. Paint just won't stick to it. It comes away. People are holding the miniature and they'll they'll touch it. And the, why is the paint coming away? Mm -hmm. They need to prime them. So right, okay. wash them and then prime them. So basically, guys, I know when you get these lovely beauties out of the boxes, you just want to go straight in. It's yeah, you've, you've got to prep your miniature. So wash them down, construct them, take your time as well. Clean any mould lines out, any, any injection markings. You can scrape them away. Fit your figure together carefully. It's time, isn't it? It is time, and just just take your time. It, you've spent a lot of money buying either a big kit of little soldiers or a, a big bust of something, and you want to construct it nice and slowly, make sure everything's right, fill it where you need to fill it, and then make sure it's all ready before you even go near a paintbrush. Yeah, now, st sticking with a prep, what do you find are the common things? I mean, I know when there's casting... As a painter, yeah. Cast as, as a caster, I could tell you the faults that I find: hair, air bubbles, seam line. air bubbles, seam lines. So I mean, Pe people's hair, beards. Get, yes, yeah. Uh, you've got to basically pay a bit of attention to that. Yeah. You? So where, like, like little bits of casting, say, like on a beard like mine, if there's a little bit there, you say a cheap set of dental tools just to scrape any lines out where there's a bit of the fill's yeah, gone in, yeah, left yeah. dust lines. Yeah. And again, brush it down. Yeah. Make sure it's all clean and ready to be prepped for the painting stage. It's all in the preparation, guys. Yeah. And another little, another little bugbear of mine, 
I share this with Owen. He's going to tell you about priming. It's a bugbear of mine, this is, and, I'm, and Owen will explain it better than me because he's obviously he's more qualified. No. Priming, go on. Okay, well, when you come to prime, you've got the usual routines. You've got brush-on primer, you've got your rattle cans, and then you've got your airbrush. Okay. So... If you brush on prime, it does tend to leave brush marks. Brush mark. But again, you're going to be going over that with your thing, as long as it's covered the model and got into all the recesses. Rattle cans, this is the big bugbear, and this is the one most people get wrong. They don't shake the can enough, yeah. and they don't warm the can on a cold day. So yeah. into some warm water for a couple of minutes, shake the can up, give it that two or three minutes of shaking time. What does that do, Owen? How, how does that benefit you? Uh, well, if it's cold and you come to spray and not shook, you end up with, like, I would call it a a misting effect. So you mm. get speckled spots all over the... It comes coat. out, the, the, the sprays. Yeah, it sprays. It looks like somebody's got, like, snow and gone... Yeah, okay. And it leaves marks and tide lines around it where it's separated from the, the right, pigment. Right, okay, okay, okay. So if you warm it and spray, again... Don't spray, this is the other big bugbear, is people tend to heavily spray up and down the miniature. Yeah. They fill all the recesses with all paint. All the detail. Yeah, and it clogs it and then sets like concrete and you can't get it yeah. back. When you come to spray, again, it's taking your time. Two or three minutes, just gentle, light coats, short bursts. Even if you can still see some of the model through the primer, there is primer over it. It's because it's, it's dark and yeah, it's it's, it's, it's the key in it. It's a, yeah, just a light, gentle coat. What what I find is, so to interrupt you, what I find is you tend to want to pile it on. Oh yeah, completely. And then all the little fine detail, and then it, it just doesn't work. Well, so that, I, like I said to you the other week, I saw a chap literally with a rattle can, and he'd prepped yeah. it and everything, but then he just sprayed thick layers of paint over it, yeah. and just kept his finger down on the aerosol, and it's just and it like, just it just took all the detail out, and it yeah. literally looked like a. a plastic mould yeah, yeah yeah all the yeah. skin texture gone everything yeah i mean another primer we use is like self-leveling but we do tend to there is a there is a difference because got... dave's got his own range that mm. you probably everybody knows that primer is the best primer i've why? come across why um because thin light coats like you say it goes into the recesses mm -hmm. it's self it self levels and it's it got a nice feel on it yeah and it, it holds itself nicely so when you've sprayed it You've, you've, all your texture lines are still there. Detail and, it, and deta everything. Detail, yeah. and it's just perfect. And if mm -hmm. you let it cure overnight, don't think, give it an hour and then start painting. That's the other big mistake. Because yeah. there is a, with every primer, there is a little bit of self-activation right, okay. as soon as you add water or, or paint on it. Are you one of these painters that, that uses a particular colour primer for or are you well, the ones well, that there's, use there's the next per, one. per job? Yeah, so it depends per job. So... So you do one per colour per job? Yeah, depending on what it is. So say if I was uh, painting up a bunch of German tanks for somebody in 28mm yeah. scale, I'll use your grey primer. Great. Cause it's the, yeah, because it's instantly the base colour. Mm. Then you can add the, the lighter blue German mm. blues to it. But again, it's it's a base colour. So white I use fairly much on bus and stuff, but yeah. my primary primer is black. You I use always black. Go with black. Oh, that's interesting. Always with black. Why black? Um... <sighs> It seems just to be the standard norm, but again, when you spray black, it gives you room to manoeuvre. So you can do thin light coats and build it up, and you can see it build up. But the black then leaves, like say on my shirt there, you can see it's darker. Yeah. And as, as you paint thinly over, that black can just yeah. just come through the base it gives you the It gives you the it's, contrast. Gives you, yeah, it starts to build up your layers. So, so let me get this right. Would you use black on a face? Yes, I'd use I'd use black on a face because again around the eyes and nose. Mm. Um, but then you go into the next painting stage where I'd add blues and purples before I even went near the skin tone. Because underneath the, the skin, un, underneath the skin tone on right. the primer, because right, okay. as you know, a lot of people just spray a, a or, or airbrush or paint a, uh, a skin tone on, mm. and the natural colours that are underneath the flesh mm. don't stand through. Mm. They look okay, but. When they're not there, you notice them. So, do you, so is your preference vehicle or or or, or people or cri creatures? Do you like what do you prefer? Uh, I I I prime with black, and then depending on what it is. So, say one of your Mister Barlow's. Yeah. I would I would prime that in black, and then I'd use a Zenithal highlight, which again is another priming technique. So you prime your figure in black. Let it go off, and then from a forty-five degree angle above the model, you Good spray down. a white primer. 
and it catches. and it settles that it literally settles so you can see where the highlights need to be on the figure so ah, if you then do a lighter coat over it it allows that to come through so that it darkens and lightens right, all in I one see what you mean, it's a yeah. quicker it's a cheat and it's not it yeah. just helps the process yeah yeah so what do you prefer though do you prefer vehicles or i paint anything you, yeah, but what's your preference? My, what, oh, what's your most enjoyable one recently? Well, I'd say the Cheshire Cat and the <laughs> cu cu currently the Undead Hamster supplied by yourself. So, you, so you, you, we've converted you. Yeah, oh, I'm a complete uh, fan of resin kits. Always so have now been, you're but... coming over to it. So, so where can everyone see your work? Because we're going to get you back on to actually do this. Right, I, I knew you'd say <laughs> that. <laughs> There's no promises there, folks. Um, and this is just about priming today, yeah. guys. What we're going to do is we're going to have a few sessions where we chat about it. And then we're going to have some couple of demo time with, with Owen. He kindly agreed to doing that if we supply him with biscuits. But that's the one. <laughs> today is primer only. We're going to get onto top coats, special specialized coats like pearl essence. Pearl essence, yeah. Uh, multi phasing paints. There you go. We're yeah. going to get onto all that and chalking and airbrushing at some point. But we thought we'd chuck a bit of technical stuff in. And have a bit of a chat to sort of get you involved in it. So, what's your personal choice then? Is it? Do you prefer to paint? Do you have a preference? Do you prefer to make vehicles or oh, no? Because I, I, I paint everything. Uh, I love, I love all my fantasy stuff. I like all my war vehicles and that sort of thing. But I paint, I paint everything. Yeah. My passion, though, I have to admit, as you know, is science fiction and horror. You love it. I absolutely loves adore it. them. Loves yeah, it. It's, loves it's, it. it's my loves loving it. life. Completely. What, what would be your ultimate if I, if you came in here and seen it? What would be? I've got. I, I, I can't say that because every time I come in, I just, I just, <laughs> I, just I just, I just drool. It's just like yeah, it's but, passionate. Yeah, but <laughs> there must yeah. be a film that we've not done that you think I've really put you on the spot now. I promised I won't put him on it. No, no, a, fil a film you've not done would be. Let me think. Um, I've not seen a scanner's bust. A scanner's. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, the famous poster with yeah, the, yeah, yeah. There was that's a kit a, of it. There was, there was years ago. It was a yeah. plastic kit. I remember yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'd love to see a bust so of that, that again. That, that's that's your you like scanners. That's your I type. adore scanners. It's one of my favourite films. Good. Uh, I mean, I, I still remember seeing Alien in in '79, and I was allowed to go and watch an X film because the cinema only knew I made zombie films. <laughs> and he sat with me during during Alien, and apparently, I I, I sort of remember. I remember watching the film. When my father came to pick me up, he said, uh, how, was, how was my lad? He said, uh, he goes, put it this way, uh, Brian. When all the teenagers freaked out, when the actor John Hurt had this thing jump out of his chest, he goes, everyone was freaking out and screaming, the girls. He goes, and I looked over at your son, he had the cheesiest grin on his face I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. And, you, <laughs> and you've been warped ever I've since. I've been warped ever since, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, guys, yeah. thank you for uh, tuning in. We hope to see some more of Owen. Um, you really don't <laughs> we do we do we do not in that way but we hope to see a bit more uh, smash a like on subscribe to the channel we are going to get him in and actually do some of this stuff so he's not going to get oh, away do. with it by yeah. just talking uh, speak to you soon guys take care bye bye